Hey everyone, this is Sam speaking. Last time we trained an AI how to park. I got a lot of great feedback from that, which I would like to explore in a whole separate video. But for now, I'd like to try something different that some of you actually already suggested, which is parallel parking. Wait a second. Even Hillary Clinton? We're gonna be using the same framework as last time, which is Unity's ML agents, and the same learning algorithm, which is reinforcement learning. Basically, the AI is trying different actions in this environment and getting feedback in the form of a reward signal. In our case, there are small positive rewards for getting closer to the parking spot and negative rewards for crashing into things or for going further away from the spot. The AI also gets a huge reward for actually stopping at the parking spot, which is also dependent on the angular difference to the parking spot direction and how far it is from the center of the parking spot. The reinforcement learning algorithm now tries to optimize the agent's behavior in order to achieve the maximum possible reward. And this way the AI is gradually becoming better at solving the task. All right, enough explaining done, let's get right into it. Just like last time, the AI starts off completely random. So let's give it a couple of hours and then see how it performs. This is after about three hours of training and as you can see, the agent is actually able to somewhat park at the right spot. You know, in some cases it's still failing pretty hard, but keep in mind that this is the same setup as last time. I simply changed the layout of the parking spot and in order to make it a bit easier on the AI, I restricted the spawn area where it randomly spawns to a much smaller area this time. While the success rate is already pretty good now, you have to keep in mind that this does not take into account whether the AI has crashed into something before actually stopping at the parking spot. It's simply the ratio of attempts where the AI was able to reach the parking spot. Obviously, I was not satisfied with that, so I started trying out different things. And the first thing I tried out was increasing the parking space in order to make it a bit easier for the AI. This led to an immediate increase to 100% success rate, but the final positioning of the car is still pretty bad. It's still a bit too close to the main road and its final rotation is also still not perfect. So I then decided to give it a bit more time in order to be able to adjust its position before actually resetting the environment. Now the agent has to actually stop for 1.5 seconds before the environment is reset. This led to a dramatic decrease in success rate because this new behavior of having to stop at the parking space is something that the agent has to actually learn first. But it also led to some quite interesting behaviors like this one. I mean, I really wouldn't recommend parking like that in real life. Keep in mind that I completely restarted the training after each of these small changes, mainly in order to make sure that the agent is actually performing better because of these changes and not because it is training for a longer time. Speaking of longer training times, I then decided to keep the environment settings pretty much the same, but to increase the training time from three hours to about five hours. I think some of these results looked good enough to now be able to actually increase the difficulty for the agent. I mean, have a look at this reverse parking. I think that's actually impressive. I started decreasing the parking space again, and I think the agent was actually able to cope with that quite well. Then I also enabled the handbrake again, which I originally disabled in order to make the environment a bit less complex. I was already looking forward to some epic drifts into the parking spot, but unfortunately the agent only used the handbrake in order to get to a full stop more quickly. I mean, it's kind of drifting, right? At this point, I felt comfortable enough to also increase the spawn area to include the entire road. 
but I still wasn't quite happy with the parking position of the agent, so I also made the final reward a bit more strict, both in respect to the positional as well as the angular difference to the parking spot. The increased difficulty of the larger spawn area actually led to the agent being less precise, but hey, it's still able to park somewhat consistently. So at this point I was interested in how far I can push it. So I wanted to try something out that a lot of people suggested in the last video, which is also randomizing the parking space itself. In order for that to work, I also had to increase the training time from 5 hours to 10 hours. But the result was actually not that bad. I mean, in some cases it still crashes into other cars, but it is able to park in an arbitrary parking space from a completely random spawn position. And for some reason, sometimes it learned that it's apparently a good idea to first nosedive into the parking space and then reverse out of it again. I mean, I really wouldn't recommend that. Just don't try it yourself. Since I still wasn't quite happy with how unprecise the agent was, I wanted to try one final thing, which was making the final reward even more strict. With this setup, the agent had to park almost perfectly in order to get any reward for stopping at the parking space. And this is the rather disappointing result of that. This setup was simply too hard for the agent to learn anything. All it learned was that it's good to get closer to the parking spot, but not really how to adjust itself. Alright, so even though this is of course pretty far from perfect parking and it doesn't really take into account any sort of traffic rules, I still think that it's quite impressive how an agent is able to learn these rather complex behaviors just from some simple sensor inputs and getting feedback whether its actions are good or bad from time to time. I actually really like watching the agent try different things. And I hope you enjoyed this new kind of format where I show you different things that I try out in these experiments. But before I leave you, there's actually one more thing that I'm really excited about. This video was sponsored by Hostinger. And they are actually offering a 91% discount if you use the custom link in the description or if you use the promo code DRSAM. The kind people at Hostinger actually reached out to me and asked me to try out their services for upgrading my portfolio. I used to have this really old static website, which I basically cobbled together myself, but they offered me the whole package, including my own domain, hosting, mail, simply everything I could wish for. So of course I said yes, and I have to say that after setting up my new portfolio, I genuinely recommend it. The whole website was super easy and fast to set up, especially since I was using a free WordPress template, which already came included with all the features I always wanted for my old portfolio like being able to sort my projects by category, my own contact form or comments on my blog post. I mean, th those were all things I wasn't able to do in my old website. Their whole setup process is actually really helpful and if you want them to, they will hold your hand the whole way through. Or you can simply skip it all if you already know what you're doing or if you just want to do your own thing. Like I said, if you're looking for a web hosting provider, I genuinely recommend Hostinger. They are really nice people and I'm super proud of my new portfolio. Check out the link in the description and the code DRSAM for a discount. Big thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. They enable me to put a lot more time into my channel than I would otherwise be able to. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe, that's completely free. I've got a lot of things planned for the future. Until then, I'll see you next time.